hello. Yo, Lemon, how's it going? Let me turn hello, it hello. Um, I'm good, yeah. All right. You excited for Sarah Kwan? Um, yes. Yes, there is a particular deck that I'm excited for. Um, don't know how much I should say about it, but yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Fine, fine. Keep your secrets. Well, just because I don't know. Well, yeah, I already told you yeah, yeah. Um, that Rob Rose and I were cooking something up. So I don't know, like, if we're meant to share it yet. Chat, <laughs> I will spoil it for you. I will spoil it. It involves musicians of Blaviken and Clear Skies. That's all I can say. Uh, well, Oh no, there actually might not even be clear skies anymore. I will say it is a tattooing deck. It is an AQ tattooing deck. I was trying to throw them off the scent. Pretty decent. <laughs> I will say that much. I won't say much more. <laughs> okay. AQ tattooing sounds well, to terrible. Be fair, sounds garbage. But we tr we've we made like so many different variations, and, and they're like, all terrible. This... Yes, sure. <laughs> Do any of them have Francesca stuff, in them? Though. Well, I wish, but you can't really put Fran in a monster's deck. Not yet. Just wait for Gwenfinity. All your dreams <laughs> will come true. We could play Uma's Curse, but yeah. So what do you think about all these like nature changes? Um, so basically non Devo. Goya might actually non devo symbiosis might actually be a thing now. Like some of these neutral nature cards look very, very good. Um just a quick question. What do you think the strongest card of the patch is right now? The, the, the strongest card of the cards that have been modified in this yeah. patch. Uh musicians, but there isn't any deck that can run them. Other than like and one in our deck, like I just think a free roach is nuts. You know what I yeah. mean? Like if you can somehow meet the condition without screwing your deck, like roach is a ten provision card, and this is a roach that comes out without you even having to play a goal. Like that's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, musicians does seem good. Your depending on like how many cards you don't actually play, though, you could end up actually costing more than like six. Additional provisions, anyways. Um, yeah, so actually, well, like the deck building like polarity is, is huge. So I, yeah. I don't know. I, I would only want to play this in a deck that could already fit it, like like naturally, you know, like oh, this deck only had two four provision cards. Okay, I can take one of them out, but I'm not gonna force it in, into anything. Um, yeah, no, I think what the strongest card is, with hands down, it has to be Tempest. Like, unless I'm, like, way of valuing it. It just seems insane. So you have to not have those two... Like, you have to have two Biting Frost in your deck or whatever. Whatever. Like, I guess yeah. the two Rain cards. Torrential probably will be what gets used to play it. Like, most. it's... It's a it's stainless basically for a weather cards and... Yes. <laughs> it's only five provisions? Yes. It's six provisions. Ooh, six. Oh, that's still but, like a less than half yes. of syllabus. <laughs> but like, but even okay. Let's just talk mid range, right? Yeah. It plays for twelve points. Granted, it's a little slow. It'll only be four immediately, but it does play for twelve points. It costs six provisions. It thins two. And since all the weather cards are four provisions, there's actually no deck building cost of putting them in. So it is a true six provision card. It's not like Renfree's game, which you're like, well, it's six provisions. Do you need to run another six provision card? So it's actually more like an eight provision card because um, yeah. of the additional deck building cost. No, it's literally just two thinning for six provisions and you get 12 points as well. Yeah, Skellig has um, gone a ton of good thinning. Now. Like Anglerfish are 5P. Yeah. The, the two thinning, you know. Like one thinning for five P is is huge, because the other all the other five P thinners you have to play two of them, right? Or like you have yeah. to play one of them to get the other one out. Angler yes, exactly. Come out on That's why own. like these new thinners are kind of insane. 
so makes compass now potentially a bit better i know you no longer have golden echo with compass but yeah like was it... maybe we see a bit more of like a non necker compass deck i feel like i'm going insane because it was like a year ago when they they nerfed the faction specific thinners because skellige and Nilfgaard had like the and, and nr had by far the best thinning they nerfed mage assassins they nerfed siege support yes. uh, and, and they nerfed they uh, package yes yeah like they nerfed all those things because they were just too good and like Every like three factions had no consistency, like didn't have good, and then three ones three did, and so they nerfed those and they buffed Roach and Nickers, and then they reverted the buffs to Roach and Nickers, and now they're doing this again. But like this time, it's a neutral card that's really only playable in two archetypes. I hate this even more. I would rather it be like a faction specific one because then it's at least yeah. like I. I, I don't know. I, I, I hate neutral cards that only work with one or two factions. Like, why? Why are I they even neutral? I don't think Tempest actually works in only one or two factions. You can play it mid-range in anything you want. Like, that's how good Tempest is, I think. Yeah, but it's like Truffle. I think it, you can put, play it in lots of stuff, but it was way better with Assimilate and Alchemy, right? Yes. I think what certain decks will want to do is they'll want to go all-in on Tempest, much like you go all-in on Waylays with Simless. Right. So what you do is you run Avalok, you run Scepters of Storm, you get two copies of your Weather of Choice in round one, um, play a list around two, get a full Weather Tempest round three. Oh, it's all copies. Yep. Oh my god. So that's four Symbiosis procs. That is um, 12 total turns of Frost, 12 total turns of Rain. So, yeah, stuff like Rain, Ancient Foglets, Symbiosis are going to have a field day with that. Which, maybe it's slightly draw-dependent, but... So, Symbiosis gets yeah. benefit because it's nature. And yeah. I guess Rain gets benefit through uh, resing Ryogon, right? Yeah. Because I'm just thinking, like, four torrential rains, like, that's that's eight turns, right? Like, or, I guess, four turns on two rows? Um, It's six turns on each row, if you do that. Oh, right, because it's three turns. It's, it's three turns, so it's oh. four copies of three turns. Jesus So, Christ. yes, that's quite a lot of rain. Um, so we may see... Frost going non devotion to get like a more of a foglet spam deck going. Um, but that's bad. That's been bad. I don't know that this will save it. Because the, the, the big problem is like tutoring the fo ancient foglets. I guess you can operator them now. I don't know. Without Tyrnalia, I guess you could still play Tyrnalia. No, no. Because the. The part where it applies the... You don't the, get the carryover. That's the reason you'd want to play Ternalia in the first place with Foglet. So, yeah, I guess you don't. But the, it, So you just have to be going all in on Foglets, and that's... I think that's bad because, you know, they can be banished and stuff. True. Also, if you can get Dominance, like, your Navigators will be huge as well. Um, Another totally not problematic card. <laughs> So it'll be a bit dependent on like how much control there is, but as like a greedy deck, it could certainly just destroy like mid-range decks. Um, Yikes. Yeah. I I didn't even think about the all copies. I was just thinking you play it. Okay, so the all copies thing you have to you have to draw them or like you have to tutor. The, yes. The weather card. Like that that is it. where it gets harder. Um. It is a bit harder than just doing Vanadae and Alyssa as well. Um, but the ceiling for a fairly small like provision cost, I think, is crazy. Yeah, well, I, I like mean, the, even the like the floor yeah. is... Okay, assuming you don't brick it. <laughs> um, yes. But even if you get three, like that still seems pretty solid. What about just two? Like, what if you're not running Alyssa? 
you just play. Oh yeah, and like a mid range deck, I think it's very good as well. Like it's too thinning. You just try and play it in around one. Yeah. Twelve points. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and too thinning, like, which is like basically yes. another fourteen points, really. I don't know. Yeah. So. Uh, this card is nuts. Yes, I'm. I'm surprised. Like, I had a quick look through. I think like the Reddit patch notes thing. No, they, they don't know shit. No one. Like. I think everyone is like, "Ooh, Tatterwing. Ooh, yeah, um, yeah. Tatterwing's such a bait, man. I'm not whatever. I I don't know. It's I think you could build a monster deck around Tatterwing. Twenty five points immune is insane. He's immune. Tatterwing is immune. Yeah. Just what the game needed. Because they said it would feel bad if it got heat waved. They literally said like, that. Oh yes. My God. I can't. <laughs> So they did mention you can still use Curse and Igni to deal with it. Notably, it's always vulnerable to Igni, I guess, because it is 25 power, so always in the Igni range. I assume that was intentional. But, yeah. But and you can also... That's still as well. really terrible. That's cool. like, like, this is the card that if it if it ever becomes good, it will become shit, because people will just run COC and Igni, and like, or Igni, and and then it's like, why you do you still, have, like, literally, well, you, you made your entire deck be shit, day. and then this card got deleted. Not necessarily, because Last Say still exists. So if you can win round one... Yeah, good luck getting your Last Say when all your units start at one power, like... <laughs> the decks that Rob Bros and I were talking about, you don't sacrifice that much um, by running Tattooing, actually. I mean... Like stalkers starting at one is miserable. You don't want stalkers then, right? So like, an AQ deck without stalkers. All right, y y sure. Look, look, we we could we could be like completely off our like off here, but yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. I'm not saying Tatterwing will infest the fucking ladder for for a couple of days. Like it totally will. And it will totally win some games. And then people will be like, oh, I guess I have to counter this bullshit binary dumb shit card. And they'll just run COC and Igni or not ever give you last say. Like the same thing that we do with Erlen now. Like it's just the worst Erlen. Because Erlen does the same thing. So does so. Those cards don't require, don't make yes. the rest of your cards be one power each. Sure, this is like what? Uh, provision cost is 11 instead of 12 for Erlen. But like, do you really think this is a better card than Ireland? It depends. I, I, I have to test. I have to play it first. It's eleven provisions, right? And and for it, let's say you have thirteen units, so twelve other units. So twelve of your, let's say all those twelve cards are are two power or three power, right? Like they still all lose one or two points on app, like. Yes. So on average, let's say 1.5 point per card times 12. You're losing 16 points so that you can play. Like, I mean, yes. then it's just a 9 Things... for 11. Yeah. You, yeah. You don't want to play those units, though. So you'll have probably a few four provision units. You basically just want to mulligan. Um, sure. Okay. For example, cards we were talking about, stuff like Wolfpack. <laughs> Stuff like Nagelfar's crew. Actually, Wolfpack is very good in AQ now. You you might laugh, but it's uh, unironically good, I think, in it's AQ dam now. Is it damage or boost? Boost. Uh, so it's one power, boost by one for each other unit on the row. Sure, I mean... It, it's just like a Chimera for 4P. And a much smaller body. Well, not Chimera. It's like a Spring e Equinox. Yeah. But, like but instead of spreading the boost, it stacks it. And Yeah, look, it's not anything crazy. It's full provision card. But it's not bad. <laughs> right, but which four provision would you sacrifice for it? Like, 
Do you, do you give up a spore? No. Do you give up an organic card? No. It have, have to be a unit. So is it a Vran Warrior and Drago Warrior? No. I'd still rather well, have Well, you're not running Vran Warriors. What's that? You're not, you'll be going all in on Swarm. So you'll be running stuff like Sayakon. You'll be running stuff like a lot of specials to just Swarm. Maybe like a Yennefer of Engerberg. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe Bone Talismans. That's the kind of deck I think you want to play Tattooing in. Oh, well, I, Wolfpack and Tattooing don't have to be the same deck, but I guess you were talking about it because it already has one power. Yeah. Okay, but which is it? Is this a card you're mulliganing or is it a card you're playing? Because it... that's, that's one of the four P's you'd actually want to play if you're forced to probably run some not as great four P's. I mean, the whole point of a Swarm deck is that you don't have tall punished targets, though. Like, you don't give any good poison targets, etc., etc. Well, Wolfpack is literally like a screaming poison target. In, in the scenario where it's like optimal to play it. I mean, red coin abuse, sure, right? Because reach, but... Like, okay, so like, here's... Um, like, Puzzle had a deck a couple seasons ago that uh, was all about not giving tall punish targets. Yeah. And and being just swarmy, kind of. Um, I just called the mid range AQ. And I changed a bunch of stuff. He had Trist Telekinesis instead of like Roach and um whatever. But he had like two chimeras and he had a bunch of swarm cards. He didn't have any ram wars. He, he had two chimeras and a bunch of swarm cards and Trist Telekinesis and two bone talismans. And like it was just winning off of that. Uh and a behemoth and no gusty, right? Just just a bunch of like yeah i mean look even that deck has a idea which would still no, be he, he didn't have any of this like this is oh okay yeah he just had a bunch of like but yeah look. low to the ground units um yes okay yes maybe it gives a slight poison target but for four provisions like it's fine Like, what, what you really want to do is you're going to be running some really good specials. So you just need your specials to be good, and you just need your units to be good enough, basically. Like, that's the way I see it. Yeah, but... Th there's not a lot of high-end specials in Monsters <laughs> that are worth anything. Uh, There's Hive Mind. There's Crimson Curse. Uh, Crimson Curse is, like gets very easily like like on paper it's 17 but setting aside the whole they could just pass thing there's veil there's like hitting one power cards like it yeah it, it gets like this deck specifically did have like crimson curse in it um because it was like a high value organic card it just like just saying like one of the things i've run into when trying this kind of deck has always been uh <laughs> like Crimson Curse is not a good round three card. It's like a good round one card. And, yeah. And but, yeah. I, I don't know how good it will be. All I'm saying is I'm excited to try it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's not as bad as immediately seems. <laughs> yeah, I just I mean I guess what I was saying was cards like Tempest or Ser Kwan, which is a beast. Um or like you know, clear skies. I, I see these cards as being a lot more powerful than Tatterwing, and everybody's obsessed with Tatterwing. <laughs> I guess because yeah, it's mean, been so shit them? for so long and now it's like, oh it's can cool. you blame them? There is actually some nice things, like perhaps if even if they're on a curse, like if that's their top their one toll punish. You can bleed with the Tattooing, force the curse, and you just Ozreal in like round three. Well, all your units are one power. Like, I can't get over that. Yes. So, look, we'll have to see how bad it is. You could also play Prince Film, you know? The fact that a shitty deck makes a shitty card less shitty does not make the deck good. <laughs> okay? Like... <laughs> like, oh, you can also play prize winning cow. Wow, wow. Okay. Well, now you've convinced me. I might have a short one day. Like, 
Oh, you know what wait. I mean? oh wait, Ted Wing goes back to one in the grave. Yes. So you can't even oh, ask no. it. It's okay. not base power. It just boosts. Okay, never mind. We weren't reading the patch notes right. Okay, that's sad. Ted Wing's so bad. Somehow okay, they managed that, to rework it completely and keep it unplayable. Done. What's that? Okay, maybe Ozreal isn't good then. Maybe that does slightly shatter my hopes for the deck. Look, I, I mean, as far as monsters go, oh, I think Relic's never. got a bigger buff than anything else. Because uh, Fiend is actually playable now. It gives yeah. you a different option than Lesser Witch at 4 fee. Uh More of it, I think, is... It, I don't know. Is it, it decreases base power for opposite row, is that right? Yeah. But right, it's, it starts that... at 8. As an 8 for 4. Like, yeah. Pretty good. Like, it's not bad the term. Yeah, it's not bad with Incubus. Like, if the enemy doesn't have units on both rows, like, it's... You, you don't have yeah. to play it first, you know? Yeah, like, it can make it a little awkward to get your Sabbath if you need to play it on, like, the other row. Like, a bit of a trade-off there, but, yeah. Plus, it works well with Tome, because, like, you play it round one on eight, and then you play it again, yeah. like, round three, and it summons the other eight out. Like, it's not bad. <laughs> Getting 16 points on yeah. the board. Uh, or a four-provision card. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't take up as much it. space as Lesser Witch. Yeah, I I don't like Lesser Witch. It just seems like for, it's your main mulligan as a 4P card, and that's your bonded. It's so meh. Yeah. It is. It's only really playable if you have Necromancer's Tome already on the board, because yeah. on Deploy, it yeah. comes out as or, good. Or Truffle. Like, that's the only other real reason to play it. Even Truffle is like copium mm. for me, because it just gets killed, and now like you've played a 5 for 4, and another 5 for 4 that's in your hand. Yeah. Um, Morford seems underwhelming, no? Like, like it what? seems alright, but... This was such an unnecessary change, man. Look, if if the problem is that... Like, I, I don't know how they're looking at these cards, but, like, the way that I look at an archetype like Relics is like, hmm, you know what? Relics is confined to Golden Necker, that's that's because that like the high end gold units that are relics are not very playable or don't fit well within the architect. Like Bloody Mistress, aside from the fact that it's relic, has absolutely no synergy whatsoever with other relics. It's just a relic, right? Because this is a thrive mm -hmm. card. This has synergy with like consumes and thrives and cat and other engines and like it boosts. Whereas nothing else in relics boosts. Like they all increase in base power, which means spore is useless against them and tall punish isn't very good and this is a card that like violates all those things so you don't play this and then this is a card that's just straight up garbage and then this is a card that boosts and can, is vulnerable to graveyard hit and requires yes, that you play Yaga it is like yeah Moon is fine no it's not not a not a not a 12 provisions it's not fine when nobody plays this in in, in relic decks it's not fine like uh, sure it works with gang Kane, but like that's it. That's the only like good card, and and you never want it to just be Gankane. And you're not going to be running like these things with Mamuna in a relic deck because a you don't want to be playing Devotion, and b like these have no synergy with anything else. So you're playing Griffins, and Griffins are also hot garbage. They're like a seven for five in this economy. And again, they're yeah. like like Nilfgaard will make you regret having played them because they'll just Illusionist this or Remedy, and then you're you're stuck. Like and like this card can brick if if you have to have played one and have it be in the game and the other one has to be in the deck. It's not even a consistency card. It's like an anti. It's, it's just a card that can brick. I don't know. I like. There's a reason you don't see this card in competitive play or this. Like or this. Like yeah. if if they want. But my point here is that we have lots of high provision relic cards that could be improved. We don't need to take a card from beasts. Right, like ruin that. This was a this was an interesting card. Maybe it needs a provision buff. Maybe this should have been seven P or something, and it would have been completely playable. The mechanic is interesting. I have a bunch of beasts, rats. Like we have Noon Wraith and we have uh... Night Wraith. Noon Wraith doesn't really help you, but yeah, right. Night Wraith and Plague Maiden and uh... yes, yes. 
you know, where we're at. Like, we have all these things for beasts. Like, Toad is a beast. Uh, Ran Warriors are beasts. Like, there's a lot of beasts in MO, okay? Uh, like, there's fun. Like, some of these cards don't see any play. Like, these two or, or, or this thing, you know? You could you could do like beast is is the is the most almost viable monster archetype there is. You could actually make like five changes and make beast playable. And Morvite is like a cornerstone of such a such a thing. Instead, they remove this and make yet another high provision relic. The thing with beasts, I always felt, is if you wanted to play swarm, why not just play it? like beasts aren't don't have to be swarm, like. Like, hybrid is not a swarm card, but it's a beast, you know? Like, uh, more of a boosting all beasts no, by one isn't... doesn't have to be a swarm thing. Does it? Well, it's a, it is inherently a swarm effect, boosting all your beasts by one. Sure. But it's also got like, a big body. I'm sure you can just... You Otherwise, can you can play a Spring like Equinox a... or Bone Talisman if you were going to play Swarm. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's, I mean, like, there's no Stalker card in Beasts that, like, benefits from being taller other than maybe sort of Wild Hunt Hound. But, like, there's, I mean, there's just a lot of Beasts. Like, look at how many four provision Beasts there are in Monsters. Like, these are not Swarm cards. But... The thing is also, none, none of them are good. Yeah, so make them good. Like, like I'm saying, but they also support like drastically different archetypes as well. You have Death Wish. You have, um, well, mainly just Death Wish, frankly. I mean, but, like the only reason these the things death death support Death Wish is because Death Wish is like the only viable thing that, that can use them, right? But now that Arrakis got buffed, Ran Warrior is using Arrakis. But this was always a good card. Yeah, it just didn't have like viable decks that could play it. This is also a very good card. It just didn't have viable decks that can play it because this, I mean, this is a seven for four, right? Like, assuming you have the consumes and it's multiple bodies and the bodies could, could have synergies and like, it's just the rest of the deck, the archetype wasn't there. It was an un, it was like a 75% viable thing and they took one of the cornerstones of it and added another high provision relic. I don't know why we need another high provision relic. Like, of all the high provision cards and monsters, one, two, three, four, five. Like five of the of, of the top 12 monster cards are relics. Did we really need a sixth one? We have we have yeah. two and vampires. I think that gets me is isn't a particularly interesting effect either. Like it just increases its base power. So make it interesting. I don't care. I just don't know why. Like, who was yeah. asking for the for a regis for relics? Raise your hand. <laughs> Yeah, like like the only sort of interesting thing I can see with it is it works with Osral, but like it's not really going to get much bigger than an Igern by the time you're going to Osral it. No, because Igern starts at 15. And like Regis, if you're lucky, gets to 15 by, by the end of the game. It's like, it's, it's basically just a more expensive Aaron Dite that you don't have to be leading. You don't have to be what? Which is, oh, you don't have to be ahead in points. Yeah, or you know, it's like a wild hunt hound that stays in your deck and doesn't require dominance. I don't know. It, it's it's a stupid card. It's like so uninteresting. So that that yeah. that's what pains me. Is like you, you you take a card that was almost interesting and almost viable, you change it, you make it a relic, and you make it the most boring, fucking like tired ass trite design that you could possibly think of. Was there anybody who was clamming, clamoring for another guardian, like, like guardian, but this time it's a relic? <laughs> I can't think of a less exciting card than this. <laughs> I would rather more would not be playable than this. <laughs> yeah, like a card like Tatterwing, I'm like, okay, can I build a deck around that? That seems interesting. Yeah, at, at least like Tatterwing is like... like... It may be good. It may end up being shit, like yeah. I predict. But at least it's interesting, right? Like you have to think yeah. about it. You have to try it. You yeah, want to try it. I'm just like no one's I gonna guess give I a shit. In a relic deck, but I can't really even do anything with it because it just doesn't interact with anything. I feel unless I'm like really missing interactions, 
Okay, maybe it's decent with Triss, actually. That's the one thing I missed. You can meet your shower at. But, yeah. but like, that's a long way to go <laughs> for a, like, just play a fucking Goliath. <laughs> or, or Rat Catchers. It works from round one. This is a card that you can't play in the first 10 turns of the game. In an archetype yeah. that's like Smorky Point Slab. Like this isn't vampires where you just like have in like a lot of reach because you have bleeds and, and you just want to like get to around three. No, this is an archetype that like dominates the pace of the game. It's it's tempo based, it's point slammy. It's not like a carryover building archetype. Because whenever it tries to do that, it just gets fucked. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, just... actually, wait, you can she who knows it in round two, and then it keeps increasing its base power in round three. Yes, that's what you play it in. But, but it was already working in Graveyard. Why do you need she who knows to keep it on the board? Because then you get the points in round two and in round three. It's, it's not good, but like... But well, how's that different from she who knows in a rat catchers, which is seven provisions instead of twelve, and starts at nine yeah. instead of starting at yeah. one? Yes, I. But yeah, I don't know what Morphid is meant to do. Okay, do you see why I'm on. bewildered by this? Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Morphid change either. <laughs> okay, I I feel like I somehow thrust you into the position of defending Morphid. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, look, be look, it to I, a pulp I, I, I even try. I'm a fan of the old Morvid as you were, because they were basically changing, like, all those old, just boosted generic tag by one card. Like, Death Mold got reworked. Um, when? I think, right? Didn't he? Or did he just get buffed? Not this patch. <laughs> Some time ago, something happened to Death Mold. Oh, no, it hasn't. Oh, oh. he became an order. Never mind. I, s I thought the generic just boosting some tag by one have been getting changed. Nope. Drake Bondu used to do that. He got changed. That's it. Drake Bondu is the only one. I think that's. Mm. Hey, Pastor. Did you get to the other factions yet? Uh, we've just been like jumping around because <laughs> Levin's here. And I want to get all the juice. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else is juicy? Um, I wasn't that big a fan of Morvid, by the way. It's just a more interesting ability yeah. to me than like another fucking Lake yeah. Guardian. <laughs> yeah, new Morvid. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, um, Morvid was like cool. Okay. Oh, you played like you know a Plague Maiden with Karanthir and you you know consumed it, and then you jammed a Morvid, and you played for like six plus eighteen. That was a twenty-four point card. Morvid will never play for 24 points now. <laughs> but we talked about Ulfadin. Yeah. We have not. Ulfadin is like, sort of like a treason. Yeah, they just keep increasing. There are all these like, cards that are seven provisions that are like, not played because they're expensive. And instead of making them six provisions, instead they just make them like 10 or 11 or 12 provision and tack on a bunch of sh like, an increased ceiling, but like the floor stays the same, and then they're like, "Play it, go on, play it." Yeah, Ulfidin will be a good sort of randomish, just gotcha card. Maybe you can play in beasts, but I don't like with the rain. Maybe you can get the bloodthirst three. But it, the problem is like it doesn't really fit. I'd say in like a proper control list because you want to be killing things beforehand, um, and that's when you want to get the bloodthirst. Like, the problem with all these other Bloodthirst cards now is that the Bloodthirst leader in Patch Title Fury is now purely tied to serve. Yep. And if you use your P Fury too early, you risk the opponent getting rid of the Bloodthirst and you can't really risk your serve not sticking. So, yeah, I don't know. Just like, just like Vampires is, is a victim of Regis now. Like, you have to have bleeds on them because Regis is such such a... When you have one card be such a huge amount of your points, like Simless or Regis or whatever, yeah. right? Like, it, it just, like, hamstrings the rest of the archetype. It forces you into play a certain, to playing a certain way, and it, like, makes all these other cards not playable or not important. 
And there's like Ulfidin's a great yeah. example of that. I, yeah, I don't see Ulfidin sitting fitting in beats. I don't see it fitting in a controlly list, which is those are really the only two places you run it. Yeah, I mean people are playing in a beast now, but like it's because it was 7p and it was a beast. Now it's 10p. Yeah. And like, why the hell would I play this when I could play a Ser Kwan for eight provisions? Yeah, I'm not convinced Saquon is that great in Beast because you're generally playing. Actually, uh, you have some swarm. Well, I, I have like a lot of swarm fish in, in round one. Freeze game. Or in whatever round I'm, I'm okay, making. Fish. Axel, maybe. Because you play Roach, you play Knickers, right? You play Axel a lot of times. Okay, that's fair, actually. You got the stratagem. Like, I run out of space plenty. You got Renfrey's gang. Okay, yeah. I, I forgot some of the other stuff in round one. Yeah. I was thinking more in, like, a round three, where you tend to play a bit slower. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, and seagulls. Yeah. You, like, if I'm playing Serkwan, I run Oh, yeah, seagulls. seagulls are a thing. Okay, I, I haven't touched Beasts in a while, so. Yeah. Okay, I underrated Serkwan and Beasts. Um, and it's a beast. But, but like, I'm not even saying Serkwan's amazing. But it sure as shit beats a 10 provision Ulfa did. Yes, for sure. Because like, like, it damages the unit by half its power. So it's like, it's a card that gets value against a very tall target. What are very, very tall targets in the current meta? Uh, Erland, which is immune. So, which is immune. Tatterwing, which is immune. It can hit Erland now because Erland, if they have a unit next to it with a bloodthirst, it can get through the immunity. Are you okay, Lemon? Do, do, you, do you need like an EpiPen for that copium overdose? Like, <laughs> oh my god, that was. <laughs> look, I look for interactions. Yeah, that tell, tell me some good. more about how Falibor is actually playable now. You walk, I, I, while you're I, on I the are. subject of defending shit cards, tell me how much you like Falibor. I'm good. <laughs> I don't like that Brucey deck as much. I'm, I'll pass. Oof. Um. <laughs> Rest in peace, Kira Metz, by the way. A card that, see, that saw some play occasionally will see absolutely zero play now. I mean, I, I really saw it played in like a Renfrey list in and all. What's that? I only remember seeing it played in like Renfrey and all, really. Kira? Yeah. It was played in that, and it was played in, uh, you know, from Temple. Because it was still, like, if you had two five-power cards, which is not at all uncommon. Uh, I'm fine I'm fine with them reworking and our golds to be more archetype-specific, because that means that Temple is worse. <laughs> don't even say it, man. Temp don't even. I bet you they're patting <laughs> themselves on the back now when they see Temple play rate or win rate drop because of this shit. Like this is like how they nerfed Harvest. They just added a bunch of garbage shit to the to the Harvest yes. table, so that Harvest would like screw you half the time, and then people stop playing Harvest as much. Making something more high rolly is not a good way to nerf it. Temple will still yes. give two Philippas or two freaking uh, Varaxuses, and it'll be just as in, it will be even more infuriating now to lose to it. Like it's yes. worse. <laughs> uh. yeah. Um, moving on to Delirium. Um, wait, what about Kira? Okay, fine. Oh, wait, are we still talking Kira? No, I thought we were on Skellige. Okay, Kira. Delirium is um, more interesting. <laughs> I don't know if it really is more interesting. Uh, it's, it's like, like a, a one-guard compass. Temple. Kind of. Where the hell is it? I don't, I don't, like, what, what, what's the point? Uh, it's like fun, you know? You just never know what you're gonna get. Delirium is like a box of chocolates, and, and the other one goes in the graveyard, so then you can, like, res it. Actually, no. I, I used to love playing the Rune Bros together, like, years ago. Maybe, like, previous me would have liked it more. <laughs> Young, naive Lemon. Um, Dispatch is like, shut up and take the battle pass? What do you mean? Is Falism... Well, no, because Tritum, like, you, bo you boost it if you boost the Tritum by 5, it will still only do 1 damage. If you boost the Falibor by 5, it will do 5 damage to a random target. So, random beast. 
It's it has to be not in your starting deck. Okay. A random beast and a random human. I mean, you could get like a giant boar, or you could get a Fakusha. Yeah, if you don't have Fakusha, like, you're, if, if you manage yeah. to be running the one Skellige deck that doesn't run Fakusha for some reason. Because, yeah, now we don't play Compass anymore. Yeah. There's Dire Bear, Kelpie, Melusine. Yeah, there's good beasts, but like you have to get them. And they have to not yeah, be in your deck. Yeah, and you'd be running. Yeah. I'm just trying to select some of the higher end beasts. Maybe you're lucky, like you're not running a Kraken, you roll a Kraken. Human, I think, is a lot more variable. There's way too many humans. Like, you just get Ioana. Like, um... Uh... There's a Kelpie. There's an Olaf. Kraken, so Fugusia, Malacene. Draco Turtle, Combi. And, of course, Ulfadin. The massive 11, 10 provision card or whatever. It was good, though. Oh, yes. Okay, no, the Ulfadin change was to make Delirium better. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm a bit sad that Delirium got a de facto, like, all actual Delirium, the six damage split got a de facto nerf being moved to Gigascope because now it's more expensive. Like, that was actually seeing play in, like, the. Right, it was a list. six for five. Now it's a six for six. Yeah. yeah. Which feels pretty on They're like, man, nobody likes Gigascope. They keep liking, they, everybody wants to play Delirium. Let's force them to play Gigascorp like, by just removing like Delirium things... and shoving it in Gigascorp. Now they'll have yeah. to play this card. Like, I swear, half of these changes are because somebody's cousin designed a card and we're not playing it. They're just going to make us. They're going to hold the gun to our head and say, play Nature Card. We said play Nature Card. Play Nature Card, God damn it! It's going to boost this other Nature Card by the number of Nature Cards in your Nature Card. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, like... You can compare Gigascope to like a Parasite. Parasite actually saw play in the Trilsky list now. Um, but the thing is, the organic tag is a lot more important. And AQ doesn't have a good way to deal six damage otherwise. Yeah. Like Whereas in Skelliger, you have gutting slashes. So it's like... Yeah, and the six, the six split instances of damage really don't matter, like, in much anything, unless you're trying to kill, like, a hefty Helg, but... That's really fallen off anyways. So it's yeah. also artificial synergy. Like Parasite isn't played in ML because, like, oh yeah, this is a monster card and has better synergy with our stuff. It's literally just a tag. Right? They could give yeah, Mastercraft and Spear the organic tag and instantly everyone would delete Parasite from every fucking deck. Like it would take five seconds for Parasite to disappear from the meta if Spear got the organic tag. Like, that's it. It'd just be gone. <laughs> Like, yeah. if something artificial like a tag is the only reason a card is played, that's bad design. Like, here's how I would redesign Parasite to have actual synergy with the archetype it's meant for. I would say overkill damage becomes drones, the same exact way the natural selection does. Then if I if I kill a yeah. two with Parasite, I get four drones. If I kill a five, I get two, yeah, you know, one drone. And nice. from leader. Like, I think that's fair. Like, that's not overpowered. That's not that strong. It still has a ceiling of seven in, 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 you know, AQ or whatever, or six normally. It's still a six for six, but it's at least interesting. The same way that, like, decoction yeah. is six damage, like, one damage six times, right? But, like, no, even the yeah, decoction at least itself was more interesting when you cared about things like great swords and dagger, dagger and... but, like, yeah. And there, yeah, or like as I said, like with stuff like Helg and shields, oil. there's some cases it's slightly better, but yeah, yeah. And then there's a lot of cards where it's worse on too, because like, right? Like, what about a veteran? Yeah. Does it? Uh, no, maybe not. Yeah, if you don't kill certain stuff, it will be worse. But I think if it killed it anyways, it doesn't really matter. The auction can uh, be a twelve. For six, when you kill a twelve-point rat catcheress. <laughs> yes, that was also one of the funny interactions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of this stuff in, that changed in Skellige. Yeah, yeah. Like really, like, the main change for Skellige is now rain is better because Tempest got changed. <laughs> That's the only thing. Uh, and like the weather part of rain didn't need a bu buff. It, 
Yeah, no. No, not particularly. I just. Uh... I actually don't even know how to fix rain. Maybe some cards that like do more damage to wet targets. You know what I mean? Like, where, like, the thing that I like about rain is when you combo like a Brock War Warrior with a Hafru to kill a four, right? Mm. Like, because the rain, like, when you, when you use guaranteed rain to like, as extra reach. Yeah, like a card, I think I saw, um, oh, what's his, who was it? Um, May, was it Merson, I think, did like some custom expansion stuff and he made, I think it was a fog archetype that I was like, some card was like, each time you get a kill with fog, it gets like one more turn on that bro. Something like that for rain could be like, interesting i think like uh, that would be cool like a card that it, every time an enemy unit dies from rain born like one more turn of rain on that row yeah yeah or like i don't know if it'll be or good. when an enemy Probably dies like good. it triggers the rain like by yeah one. instead of it being like ryoga where it triggers all the rain it just like it accelerates the rain by one or something right yeah or like spawns and procs the rain something like that could be interesting i don't know yeah i don't know if it'll be any good but I wouldn't mind something designed in that direction. It, it would just be more interesting than stack a whole bunch of rain and then res a card and go boom, 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 boost. Yeah, because like, it's also very binary, like the current rain. It's like, can you deal with messengers and stuff? If not, well, probably just get out engined. Yeah. Like infinity points coming your way. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Telian change. Telian card. Well, Telian change is not really a change. It's really just a cargo change. I mean, it, yeah, it helps. It's better now with like your dead eyes. Um, if you actually play cargo with it, for some reason I think like maybe now you tech like a pact or something. <laughs> Do you like simless and then you pact? But that's not even any worthwhile. Um, no, it's just it. But, it's just instead of instead of like prepared, it's just doom now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the doom change. It doesn't. It dead eyes have doomed. That, I That's guess really I the that, only yeah. extra buff. Um, but but you're still not the, the gonna backup, play. Like uh, yeah, unless you're full on like elf swarm. Um, like the. Just the backup plan is basically better anyways. Do, do they really want you to, like, it's it's like they really want you to play Heist with Telian? Like, I don't, I don't want to see Heist be good, like, ever, honestly. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a infuriating card, like. Yeah, like, I don't want to play against it. That's the main reason. Well, especially on ladder, because, like. Yeah. You don't even know. If they have heist, like they could just play like three elves, right? Or three non neutral, non veiled, so not soldier, whatever, whatever the, the fucking mm. criteria are. Non neutral agent, bandit, or soldier. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then they can just drop the heist. And now, like, do you, do you, you have to kill all three of those, like, right away. Like, you, like, you can't react to it. I know, I know that there's like, it's not the same turn or whatever, but. This this thing where really you like, you feel obligated to kill every single Vanadane right now because they could tell you on it, right? Well, yeah, cargo is like gonna be the same thing now because at least before you could lock it, and unless they had Telian, it was that was it. That was all that that was gonna get. But <laughs> yeah, um, I look, I don't think cargo or heist whatever will be any better now. You don't um, think so? It'll just be more annoying, well, I guess. It's definitely the only way because it's you can't really counter better. with lock. Yeah. It, it's Oh actually that's true. Okay, so it plays around locks. Which is I guess is better than stuff like Nilfgaard mainly, though some decks still tech like a drugery. But I yeah, mean, like the main so sort of I can't like I can't remove a seven power Vanadine with a lot of decks. 
but I can yes. walk it. Yes, I mean, that's why it's the cursed target usually, because that was that's the sort of thing they play. So you just curse it if you play against it, or yeah. Um, well, like, like in the control mirror, I mean. Okay, but what about like okay, like okay, so maybe you can answer Vanadine with curse if if your deck it's all yes, go top, yes. right? Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's hard to remove Vanadine in one turn. The main way was a lock. You'll deal with it. Um, yeah, like if you weren't playing a deck that had like a, a stupid amount of damage, you would just lock it because okay, at least now they can't cargo like, but. Yeah. But, yeah, now they can just replay it anyways, so. Agent Band Yeah. Um And also it's a re a reset. Like I guess it is a bit better. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, repeating the deployability as opposed to replaying it. So cards with order now, you know. So what are yeah. all the bandits? Um, yeah. The main thing though is like we weren't seeing like Elven, like the actual Elven that I later see play. We weren't seeing that I ambush for Nosiol. Um, we weren't seeing that soft see play. We were and initially this and then people dollar. realized it's not as good as the other thing, so they stopped. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like you play the P Strike version, and this doesn't help the P Strike version. I don't think it significantly enough would help the Dead Eye version. At least I hope not, because I don't want to deal Blue with it. Cargo that. can reset a Shiro. Oh, replay a shear. That... Hmm. Yeah. That's a choice. I'm just saying it's an order. Before you couldn't, now you can. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you could, like, oh, use right, yeah. to move two things in one turn. But the thing I'm scared <laughs> of is, like, Etrial Merlega. Right? Like, Oh, oh, they're both. Is it? It's bandit, right? Yeah, yeah they both. They're work. bandits, and so like it comes down, and then they play the other one, and then they replay this one, and then they replay yeah, this one the next turn. Lot. So like you gotta kill every yeah. single one of these cards. Like you gotta destroy this four. You gotta destroy this four. You gotta destroy this four. You gotta destroy the yeah. six. You gotta destroy yeah. the seven. Time to just play Madoc. What's that? Just play Madoc. Yeah. Time to just play Madoc. Yeah. Yeah, but do you see how this is problematic? Like everybody's gonna have yes, a bunch I, of removals I, in case yeah, I, I don't like the design of like heist. Yeah, it's scary. Even these cards are scary, like tricksters, because they're gonna play a lot of elves. Yeah, if you double infuse, yep, yep, or Dolbathon archers, like, like <laughs> it's just. But like it's not like I'm saying it's gonna be OP because they have to draw those cards and they have to like be able to play heist and they have to have the tempo and yeah, like it, it, it depends how control heavy the meta is as well. Yeah. yeah. It's just it, it's it's a suffocating kind of card because yeah, it's like it's like the way that self boon can be suffocating because it's like oh if you don't have heat wave and squirrel or whatever. Like, you might just auto lose to this. Uh, you know? Yeah. It, like, you just have to have certain answers for certain decks. And when those types I of decks know. are prevalent, it makes ladder miserable for me. Yo, yeah, I agree. Game. You know what? I think I remember in a dev update ages ago, they mentioned Dooney and said, like, the random boost might not fit that well in Northgard. But the point is, it can help protect your engines, like Impera and Forces, I think is what they said. Or Impera Brigade, the one that, like, you know, gets a charge on each spine. Um, oh, Enforcers? Oh, Enforcers, yes, sorry. Wrong Impera. I, I think I remember them saying that. So I wonder if Dooney has been meant to be using the spying archetype the whole time. And then now they actually changed it to properly work with spying. When entering the battlefield, boost self by one for each spine. So they gave it the seditious aristocrats deploy. Yeah, so when you click the Dooney order at the end of the round, basically, it'll boost for each spine unit. Wait. Oh, oh. Yeah, the Urchion order to turn into oh, Dooney. Oh, yeah. okay. 
So the, they both the click. Yes. But we'll just kill it before that happens. Like, well, you can click it same turn as well. To be fair. Okay, but then you don't get any engine value out of it. Like, what's the point of? Yes. What? It can help. It either eats control and helps your other engine stick. What time does it have? And helps your other engine Human stick Human first night. Nope, this is a dead card. You can delete this card now. It doesn't matter. They could have made it five provisions and I still wouldn't play it in a, in a, a Masquerade Ball deck because it doesn't work with Art Fame. It's an engine that you can't play as an engine. And so it's just a more expensive, seditious aristocrats. Look, like, what's the point of this card? I think it's just purely to like bait removal, eat removal, and work with spying. Ideally, if you're not like, but doesn't seditious aristocrat do that deck? already? Or yeah, thirsty dames, or raw tossers, or pikemen, or or any five or six provision card that you'd want to play in that archetype is better than this. It can help you more important engines like um, a mere live, I guess. How? Yeah. It boosts them. So you're going to play this. It's going to live. Then you're going to play Emir, <laughs> which will play another card. And you're going to hope the boost from this lands on the Emir. And having an Emir be five power, two armor is going to make it more survivable. I, I, four power. I think this is meant to be like. I, I might be reading too, way too much into this comment I remember from, like, a year ago, but, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, at least the Manganel change is nice. It's a lot better now. Yeah, like, Manganel was already kind of good. It's just that it's, again, but it's the Art Fain yeah. problem. Like... Them boosting this by one more point misunderstands the core issue. It's a machine and a siege engine. Like, we're yes. already overburdening Art Fane by running Rock Tossers. Like, we can't, and, and siege, like, uh, combat engineers. We can't, going from four bricks in terms of Art Fane to six bricks is a huge increase, right? Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Like, even, even just the four cards is pretty heavy uh, for Art Fane to deal with. And then, like, it's not because we were missing the two points. Because a Masquerade Ball deck, if, like, stuff sticking, like, two points is nothing. Every dame goes for yeah. to, like, 20-plus points. So, like, oh, I have two more points on deploy. I, I mean, I know it's more than two. I think it's going to enable some cheesy shit. Like, having it already started at two, and then with Combat Engineers, it will go even higher. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can do like raw tossers to set up spying and then kill everything between the raw tossers, which was going to get poison anyway. But you're assuming the opponent would have played, like, would have dealt with the cows somehow. But like, they can't, like, if you deploy cows and then use this to kill shit, uh, to maybe even make the cows better by killing small stuff that's next to the cows. I don't know. Yeah. Th this is certainly a lot stronger yeah. now. It's got a floor of six. But realistically, a four of eight or ten, like because, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, like it's better. I just I don't know if like the archetype it fits is yeah, yeah. it's a bit awkward there. Like it okay. might fit in I... my uh, enforcer's deck. Where is it at? Yeah, I gotta get going. All um, right, man. Thank you so much. I think, that was more than twenty yeah, minutes. Just, it's appreciated. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. Final predictions. I think Tempest is gonna be good. Tempest is probably by far the best card this patch. Also, Scepter got buffs. Like, using your Scepter round one to set up Tempest is also better. Like, it's a turn of rain on each row. I forgot to mention that. Do you see if Symbiosis um, getting play? I have no clue. We'll have to see how good an Endeavor Symbiosis is. It's basically an entirely new deck. So, yeah. maybe. Um, I think it, like, with the Tempest, basically playing two Simlesses kind of could be pretty crazy. Um, Oxenfurt God, we might actually see Syndicate um, splurging C play. Otherwise, yeah, it's basically just Weather and Swarm that might be better. But yeah. Anyways, have a good rest of your stream, and I'll catch you.
around. Thanks. See you in the next patch. See ya. All right. Do you want this song, Grupa?